Hello and welcome to the season 8 finale of <gasps> the Literary finale. Gladiators. The mm. show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hi, I'm Larry. I'm Charlie. I'm Tori. And I'm Josh. And to close out the season, uh, we're going to be going over a poem that I would say uh, uh, has probably been my favorite poem that we've gone over, definitely for this season. Uh, probably uh, uh, my favorite poem in a while that we've gone over. Mm -hmm. And that is Prayer by Louis Untermeyer. Uh, Louis Untermeyer first caught my attention uh, when he was a panelist on the game show What's My Line. Uh, I am a, uh, a, an enthusiast for game shows. I haven't watched as many because at this point I really am starting to see uh, rigged elements to them, but in their essentials like What's My Line, it was uh, I really uh, enjoy watching uh, things in that nature. But... I always thought the Wheel and Wheel of Fortune was edible. And that the little stoppers were marshmallows. You were incorrect. Okay. But uh, Louis Untermeyer yes. was kicked off a year in because he was blacklisted because of his uh, uh, Marxist activities that he had engaged in uh, during uh, World War One when he was younger. And he also, uh, they felt that he had uh, communist connections. And this was during the uh, Cold War era, which, uh, but... Uh, Louis Untermeyer was a pioneer of uh, anthologizing American literature. Uh, he is uh, often deemed as the scholar that uh, really uh, was a driving force for uh, the beginnings of our studies for mm. American literature, collections of American poetry, and he himself wrote poetry. But the discussion starter uh, relating to this uh, poem that I wanted to bring up was uh, that I'm pretty sure that when we pray, uh, most of us can agree that if and when we do, we pray for good things to happen. Why do you feel that the speaker in this poem is praying for imperfection? That's a good question. Why is he praying for imperfection? I feel like it's saying, let me be more human and in being human, be the perfect version of myself because being human is... Uh, having flaws. I mean, I think in its uh, nature it does. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, the the words that he uses, it's just uh, extraordinary, especially when you hear him read it. And I think that was uh, a huge reason for uh, picking this one over the original one that I uh, intended to include, which was Ash Wednesday. But we'll probably get into that one too, in, mm -hmm. if you like it. But uh, the whole idea. He sorts it out. First, he starts with uh, the ability to su see success, but praying that he falls short. Uh, give me the heart to fight and lose. I uh, just, yeah, that, then that he, stuck me. Then he goes about uh, having a sense of determination, but at the same time feeling a sense of doubt. Yeah, like then he talks about uh, just the uh, visual imagery, uh, seeing every aspect, both the beauty and wonder lit, and at the same time, yes, the, dirt. The, the dirt and all that spawn and die in it, which it? I think it shows that sense of, uh, while he wants to see the great things that life has to offer, he also wants, he doesn't want to lose touch with uh, the uh, struggles that he may have had to uh, well, that uh, just exists. endure. Existential. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Because he, it, we're so easy to, I, I people that obtain success, it's very easy for them to lose touch with the uh, common uh, environment, and I think that being able to weigh that out allows somebody to uh, keep a sense of who they are, mm -hmm. because it's hard when uh, you obtain so much. Well, uh, what is? I mean, when you're done, but I want to. I want to ask a question. It's a little provoking. Yes. Well, uh, every, um, all right. I mean, what is success to, to one person? To find, you know, what is success to you? What is success to you? What's it to you? What's it to everybody? I mean, what is one person's definition of success? I think that I'm, I'll, I'll elaborate that in the last. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm going to bring up the last part. Yeah, yeah, that's what The I'm very last say. part of the poem is, and when at last the fight is won, or. From the compromising things half done, keep me with stern and stubborn pride. 
But, and when at last the fight is won, God keep me still unsatisfied. I love that part because yeah. it, life is about uh, achieving, one of the great aspects of life is the ability to achieve your goals. Exactly. But should it really end? When you achieve one goal, I think that inabil that ability or that uh, not being satisfied and wanting to achieve more goals Absolutely. is a great desire. Yeah. And I think that that's exactly what he touches upon. Keep me unsatisfied so that way I may still keep asking questions. I, I, mm -hmm. I think one of my favorite parts is the buoyant doubt. Buoyant doubt. Keep me, you know, keep me afloat with questions, so that way I may keep on searching for those answers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a, a wonderful. You know, you can ask for peace and tranquility and, and and enlightenment, but by saying "keep me unsatisfied," it makes the fight for enlightenment more personal. And mm -hmm. instead of you know, don't hand it to me. Give me the strength to go find it for myself. Almost. Like I think that those God tools are even like the, the tools yeah. and yeah. the yeah. adventure itself. Absolutely. Is. Uh, much more meaningful than the destination. Absolutely, yes. But I think that the way I summed it up was, this poem is about the ability to do your best, but to remain humble and want to keep doing your best. See, that's, uh, yeah. And I think yeah. that that's what Being the humble. prayer is all about. It's not about, it could be construed as a sense of a negative attributes, but at the same time, I think that these negative attributes make the experience and the individual only more positive authentically positive, not artificially positive. You know? I don't know. I, I, I think uh, it's uh, what's it do about? Nothing really. It's like that's it's, it's, a, it's a good description of what life is, right? Like the human, human nature. I would say that. But I mean, I wouldn't say that there's anything particularly positive or negative about it. It's just, it's just what, what man is in his nature. Mm-hmm. To an extent, I, I mean, think that's what we wish, what we, uh, what we uh, strive to uh, do, and what we. I think it's an idealized. Like, nobody's ever satisfied, right? No, nobody is ever satisfied. So he's just praying for, you know, the, the state that but, people normally find themselves. But to pray to make something positive out of it. He didn't yeah, say I that. think that's what. It, he didn't say that. He doesn't pray for anything positive. He doesn't, but that's what we get. I think that the context of everything that's going on around him uh, leads to that uh, leads to that point. Right. Prayer mostly <coughs> is usually of giving thanks, gratitude, praise, and whatnot. But it's also, in a way, asking for something and saying, "Please uh, enlighten me," or you know. And I think that this yeah. has this. I think that in a way, it really. He does ask for a sense of enlightenment mm -hmm. and uh, give me the in, strength, in the sense of humility. I it's, it's an a, unconventional yeah. way of saying, "Give me what that which I would need, but give me the tools so that way I can find it myself." Mm -hmm. Like I don't want Absolutely. you doing all the work for me. I want to do it myself. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't don't. And I think that that me. makes yeah. it all the better. I think the ability to do <clears throat> positive things is what mm -hmm. I think. If if one person got everything that they wanted all at once. Would they be uh, happy? Would, yeah. would, it, would it be yeah. worth it? You got that car, you got the in-ground pool, you got the cleaning service, mm -hmm. all the drums in the world. So now you. you lose the difficulty in life. Yeah. Where is that happiness? How do you obtain it? I mean, mm -hmm. I could be banging. How, how do you maintain it? Yeah. Keep the, banging all the drums. Mm -hmm. yeah. Already done. Yeah. So. yeah. It's like uh, an octopus, right? Yeah. If you keep an octopus, you have to constantly give it something, something to do. We're like that. Hmm. People, you know what I mean? Like, if if the communists ever got their way, right, and we ended up in some kind of golden utopia, we'd all go crazy. We wouldn't know what to do. We'd have to destroy hmm. things just so we could build them back together. Hmm. Like, if everybody had everything that they ever needed or wanted, we wouldn't be able to handle it. That's a really, I would. That was a, that's a really interesting trap thought. Hey, it's not mine. Somebody else said it. I forget who. But it's a good point. Yeah, it's like, so that's what I mean, though. It's like, what he's describing, he's praying for what we are already. And I think in a but way, But the like, ability to embrace it. Yeah, that's what I was just no. about to say. Is. I mean, that's no prayer. Because, I mean, you're supposed to want to transcend what you are, right? That's, that's I, but, the purpose of prayer. But, but I think that's, that's exactly the point, because there's the whole idea that there's a lot of people that can't embrace mm -hmm. 
what uh, life, whatever life has to offer. And there are some people who do not want to embrace. They just don't want any part of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in any derogatory or any condescending way. It's a statement. Of it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, like, you know, but you're not supposed to. Cake? You're yeah, not supposed good. to accept it. Do we have any uh, final thoughts? Yeah. Read it. And read it again. And bop it. Twist I agree it. with Charlie. Pull I think it. we should read it and read it again and then listen to Willy Untermeyer mm -hmm. recite the poem. And bop it again. Because it's very, very enlightening and refreshing and just uh, gives you that uh, great sense of it may sound bleak, but when you think deeply about it, it's quite inspiring. And you wanted you had a last point, Larry? Um, no, not really. I mean, I just I just don't agree. But I don't want to really go down a get into an <laughs> argument about it. You know, it's not it's not important enough. It's just a, it's a silly poem to me. I don't think it's silly. So, and I'm sure. Uh, Charlie and Tori, uh, whose side do you stand on? Oh, don't, 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 pit, <laughs> don't pit us against one another. That's not fair. Uh, I it's see. It's okay. Your... We're far enough from one another. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. Was that a pick a side? <laughs> pick a side, Charlie. Oh God. Who you win? No. Oh no. It this determines matter. if we come back next season or not. <laughs> I learned this in an earlier episode. Everybody's coming back next season. No, I learned this in an earlier episode. <laughs> what? That means I want a cookie. <laughs> okay. I want a cookie. So speak it, Charlie. So do you think it's silly or enlightening? Ch ch what? Me? This poem. Do you think this poem is silly or do you think it's enlightening? You know, I, yeah. Me, honestly, I think... Sorry. I think it's enlightening. But... Thank you. Okay. Well, what is it enlightening? It just... Thank Charlie. What? Oh, don't leave me hanging. <laughs> That's what Becky said to me the other day. What, what, what does it enlighten? It, what, do, what, does it, mean, what does it teach you? All right, it teaches me to be more humble. And, you, you know, there were times, you know, I mean, tomorrow I'm going to go to church. He's, and, he literally you know, asked for pride. <laughs> it, you know, you're saying it makes you humble. He goes, give me pride. I didn't say, well, he's not really pride. I think it's more so. I don't, uh, I don't see any confidence humility. in confidence. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't I mean, say confidence. confidence. He said yeah. pride, stubbornness. Well, stern and pride is what yeah, he does say stu yeah. stern and stubborn pride, but I think it's in. I think that's a sense of uh, determination. I mean, yeah, and it's. I think, I mean, uh, it's yeah. not compromising, right? I think it's a play it's, on those it's right after not words. I think, yeah, I think he's trying to. I think it's, it's the juxtaposition the of impactfully. a prayer with these negative attributes, saying, "Give me those negative attributes." So we have a dictionary in here. We'll settle it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> you, you can't say it's what, about what being what humble. He's asking for silly for or pride. anything. Well, I've just, like I just said, I think it, it's it's a fun use of you know a prayer, but using. Give me negative attributes so that way I may better myself. Okay. That's how I read it. I'll leave a link down below to this particular poem. And I'll drop a link, y'all. Here is my uh, Louis Untermeyer books, poetry yeah. collection. Uh, Chicken nuggets. Some of these are 90-year-old books, too. The ones in yeah. here. May I touch them? Yeah, well, now the air yeah. comes on. Roast uh, Levithin and Burning Bush. Oh, wow. And I think this one was uh, this was only a little... Pamphlet. Yeah, I was thing, say it's a little pamphlet. But, uh, probably. I know I'm almost in condition. Mm. You guys can I will uh, not eat them. look at them if you want. <laughs> but I want to, uh, I want to thank everybody for, uh, following us, uh, for the, uh, I, I think this has been our best season yet. And I want to thank everybody that's taken part. It's been, uh, oh, you can even uh, smell. Tori, Charlie, what Larry, is? Jesse, oh. Ari, thank Trevor. You. Uh, Eileen, Danielle, from Eileen, this is Danielle. Uh, there's uh, Dr. Bordelon, or uh, Dr. David Bordelon, Nicole, How are you? Yes. Uh, Nick, Jesse, Kayla, yes. Brian. Who, who, uh, I think we covered them all. Uh, <laughs> Professor Hartman, Professor Irene Hartman. Oh, uh, she Sarah. Doing? Uh, she was well. Faith, Brianna, <laughs> and Kim. Uh, and to all of you. Thank this you. has been a great season, uh, and even Bunny the Bunny, who uh, sat in as a backstop. Bunny, bunny. bunny the Bunny? Who's Bunny the Bunny? I think Bunny, bunny the yeah. Bunny brothers. Okay, good. All He's right. the one that I told Charlie not to put in his pants. I didn't do that. That was this season? No. That was last season. But I, I, I was an accident. <laughs> I already stuffed it in my pants. Thank you guys for tuning in 
to our eighth Love season. You, Ari. We will be back for a ninth season where we have a lot in store. And for now and as always, we encourage you to keep, keep reading. reading. I need some cookies and places.